it is that time of the year again when I raise this question. The last time I asked this, Hamilton and Verstappen were battling for the championship lead. Ferrari and McLaren were fighting for the third position and Mazepin was still on the grid. Many things changed since last year, but one thing remains. Daniel Ricciardo is still struggling in McLaren. And so, I ask this question again. Is it finally time for Ricciardo to retire? Ricciardo has changed more teams in the last half decade than any other driver on the grid. In 2014, Ricciardo replaced Mark Webber at Red Bull, moving from Toro Rosso and teaming up with the four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel. With the rule change in 2014, Mercedes dominated and Ricciardo won the team battle against Sebastian Vettel that year. Ricciardo gave such a stiff competition to the former world champion that Vettel triggered a clause in his contract to leave Red Bull after the season end and move to Ferrari in 2015. That meant Ricciardo got a new teammate in 2015 in the form of Daniel Kvyat. 2015 was an unremarkable year for Red Bull with both drivers struggling to get decent points. And even though Kvyat won the team battle that year, he was replaced by Max Verstappen the following year at Red Bull. This followed a two and a half year time period with stiff competition with the young prodigy Max Verstappen. Verstappen was different to every other teammate Ricardo ever had. He was younger, more talented and eager to impress the bosses. He was also perhaps favoured over Ricardo by the bosses when it came to setups, upgrades and strategies. In 2019, when he finally decided to switch teams and move to Renault, it couldn't have come at a worse time. Red Bull was also considering ending the relationship with their engine manufacturer Renault and losing their driver to them hurt Red Bull even more. Honor even said that it looked like Daniel was backing out from a fight. His two years in Renault was largely unremarkable, only highlights being two podiums in 2020 but the team did not have the performance to fully utilize his potential. The announcement that Ricardo would compete for McLaren in 2021 was welcomed with much excitement. McLaren, after years of struggle, was by then clearly dominating the midfield and were the favorites to win the best of the rest tag. They were also clearly capable of winning races and definitely several podiums. Ricardo was seen as someone who could clearly get McLaren back to its glory days together with the young Lando Norris. But he had a difficult start to the season and faced heavy criticisms across the media. The Mercedes-powered McLaren was unlike any other Formula 1 car he has ever driven. While he got into grips with the car later in the year and even won the first Grand Prix for McLaren since 2012, he still finished well behind his less experienced teammate at the end of the season. Now, halfway through 2022, Ricardo is still being consistently outperformed by his teammate and is still falling short of the McLaren boss's expectations. And now that McLaren is rumored to sign Oscar Piastri and let go of Ricardo, what exactly are Ricardo's options? Ricardo have options only in lower tier teams now. While Aston Martin went for Fernando Alonso to replace the retiring Sebastian Vettel, the options are probably only in the following teams Haas, Williams, or Alfa Romeo. But perhaps Ricardo should not go for any of them. I believe it is not going to help anyone, not the teams, and definitely not Ricardo. For teams to sign someone with Ricardo's caliber and track record, they would have to pay a huge salary, which would otherwise go into their developmental costs. This is, of course, fine if Ricardo can help them in some way, but I do not see Ricardo succeeding where the likes of Raikkonen, Vettel, and Alonso failed. To be honest, no driver can single handedly help a team get from lower tier to mid or from mid tier to top. And for Ricardo, how does it help to sign for a lower tier team now apart from a few more years of salary? If anything, his legacy would get ruined further if we end his career at the back of the field or DNFing every other race. 
In my opinion, Ricardo should just retire now at the end of the season in a team that is perhaps the second most successful team in Formula 1 history. He could take a few years of break and then come back as Formula 1 media person. After all, he is well loved by all fans alike and drive to survive just increased his popularity and brand. In my opinion, Ricardo should leverage that but not on the track but off it holding the mic and connecting with the fans who love him for who he is. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like to watch similar content and stay tuned to I am Formula for everything Formula 1. Until next time, take care and stay safe.